On the chilly evening of November 16, 1957, Edward Theodore Gein, a reclusive farmer and handyman in the small town of Plainfield, Wisconsin, was arrested by local authorities. Police were investigating the sudden and puzzling disappearance of Bernice Worden, a well-known hardware store owner in town, who had gone missing just the day before. At first, they suspected Gein might have been involved in her vanishing, but what they uncovered at his family farm would shock the nation and stain Plainfield with a dark legacy that endures even today. The gruesome discoveries revealed not just one murder, but multiple bodies, desecrated and disfigured beyond recognition. Ed Gein, a figure who was once merely seen as a shy and somewhat odd local, would soon become infamous as one of America's most notorious killers and body snatchers, with a macabre story that would inspire numerous horror films, including Psycho, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and Silence of the Lambs. His crimes would stand as some of the most horrifying ever uncovered. In his early years, Gein was known as an isolated and introverted child, often avoided by other children due to his peculiar behavior. His home life was deeply troubled, his mother, Augusta, a devoutly religious woman with extreme views, strictly controlled her son's every move. She held a grim and fanatical view of the world, convinced that society was a wicked and immoral place destined for damnation. Augusta regularly preached to Ed and his brother Henry about the corrupt nature of the world and warned them to avoid forming friendships or even interacting with others, whom she labeled as sinful. Under her relentless influence, Gein grew up sheltered and isolated, developing a warped view of society and people. She confined her sons to the family's sprawling but run-down farm, ensuring they had minimal exposure to the outside world. Gein, desperate for his mother's approval, became entirely devoted to her, even as her rigid beliefs and punishments created deep psychological scars. Despite Augusta's tight control, Gein attempted to attend school. However, his unusual behavior and lack of social skills quickly set him apart. He was known for his quiet demeanor and nervous laughter, which unsettled other students. Classmates and teachers alike found him odd, and he became a social outcast. His mother, rather than encouraging any attempts at friendship, punished him harshly for even the smallest social interactions. These early years of loneliness and repression would leave a lasting mark on Gein's psyche, seeding an obsessive and complex relationship with his mother that continued long after her death. The tragedy that would start Gein's descent into infamy occurred in 1944, when he was 38 years old. On a spring day, Ed and his brother Henry were clearing away marsh vegetation by burning it. A fire quickly spread out of control, forcing the brothers to call for help. When the local fire department arrived, they successfully put out the flames but made a shocking discovery, Henry was lying dead in a marshy area, face down. Although Henry's body bore signs of injury, including evidence of blunt force trauma to the head, authorities ultimately ruled the death an accident. Suspicion about Henry's death has lingered for decades, with many believing this was actually Gein's first murder. This incident was never properly investigated, however, and with little solid evidence, the authorities closed the case, allowing Ed Gein to continue his increasingly disturbed existence on the family farm. After his brother's death, Gein's relationship with his mother intensified. She remained his only meaningful connection, even as she continued to control him with harsh words and sermons. When Augusta passed away in 1945 after a series of strokes, Gein was devastated. Her death shattered his world, leaving him alone in the large, decaying farmhouse. He boarded up all the rooms his mother had used, essentially creating a shrine to her memory. Only one small room beside the kitchen was left unsealed, where he lived amid dirt and squalor, surrounded by piles of trash and filth. The rest of the house remained a frozen monument to Augusta, preserved exactly as she had left it. As the years passed, Gein's mental state deteriorated. He became obsessed with books on anatomy, death cult magazines, and bizarre stories that fed his fascination with the macabre. 
his fantasies grew darker and more twisted, influenced by his mother's deep-seated disdain for women and his own suppressed desires. Alone and unmoored, Gein began making nightly trips to three local cemeteries, where he would dig up recently buried bodies. He claimed to have made over 40 such visits, typically in a state of trance-like compulsion, carefully choosing only the remains that seemed to resemble his mother. What he did with these bodies was horrific beyond belief. Driven by a disturbing need to reconnect with his mother, Gein started to fashion a woman's suit out of the skins of his victims, which he hoped would allow him to become her in some twisted, surreal sense. His home became a chamber of horrors, filled with ghastly trophies and artifacts fashioned from human remains. Gein used skulls as bedpost ornaments and made bowls, utensils, and other household items from bones. He upholstered furniture with human skin, crafted leggings from tanned flesh, and even fashioned a belt decorated with nipples. Most disturbing of all was the skin suit he was constructing, which included a corset made from a female torso, and a mask and leggings of human skin, all intended to allow him to physically transform into his late mother. In November 1957, the macabre world of Ed Gein was uncovered after the disappearance of Bernice Worden, the owner of a local hardware store. Her son, Frank Worden, a deputy sheriff, grew concerned when she failed to open her store one morning. On investigating, he found bloodstains inside the shop and discovered that the last sales receipt was for antifreeze, purchased by none other than Ed Gein. Acting quickly, authorities took Gein into custody at a nearby grocery store and proceeded to search his farm. There, they found the body of Bernice Worden, hung upside down and gutted like a slaughtered animal. But what investigators discovered in the rest of the house was even more appalling. In addition to Worden's body, they found remains from multiple other victims, though most of these were parts Gein had exhumed from graves rather than murder victims. The discoveries included a chair upholstered with human skin, skulls used as bowls, a lampshade made from a human face, and a grotesque woman suit. Authorities were horrified by the scene, and Gein's crimes quickly became headline news across the nation. Under questioning, he readily admitted to his grave-robbing activities and revealed that he had been motivated by a twisted desire to resurrect his mother through this morbid collection of body parts. Gein was officially charged with the murder of Bernice Worden and eventually confessed to the killing of another woman, Mary Hogan, whose remains were also found on his property. However, he was deemed mentally unfit to stand trial, and in 1958 he was committed to a mental institution, where he spent the rest of his life. Despite attempts to retry him, he was never declared sane enough for a public trial, and he remained institutionalized until his death in 1984. The legend of Ed Gein has endured for decades, casting a long, dark shadow over American culture and becoming the basis for some of the most disturbing horror stories in film and literature. His case raised questions about the influence of psychological trauma, isolation, and fanaticism in the development of violent behaviors, and he remains one of America's most infamous murderers. His tragic and horrifying story has left a permanent mark on the collective psyche, serving as a grim reminder of the human capacity for darkness and the deep scars left by an oppressive upbringing and unresolved psychological wounds.